Have you ever wondered how to talk to someone about safer sex, STDs, or whether it's comfortable to go to bed with them? When it's time for the talk, do you choke? And not for good reasons. I'm Kathy Martilli from the IntimacyDojo.com. I'm Reed Mahalka from ReadAboutSex.com. And Reed has a great safer sex elevator speech that makes it really easy and actually kind of fun to talk to someone about it. A lot of people don't know how to do the safer sex elevator speech because no one's really ever taught them. Yeah. And they don't have a way that works for them to have that conversation. So you end up making it anew all the time or not being really sure what it is you're supposed to be saying. Um, and so what we end up doing is we end up waiting for the other person to start the conversation so it'll become easier. So my basic approach to this is when you start wondering if it's time to have the safer sex conversation or you're waiting for the other person to initiate it, that's your signal. It's time to have the conversation. And what I would recommend um, is using, you know, like a little template, which I like to call my safer sex elevator speech, as a means of like, you know how to do this. So when you have the confidence of knowing what to say, it's easier to start the conversation. I've actually blamed it on Reed before. I've said, hey, this guy I know has this talk that you can do. Because I, when I first did it, I was really awkward and shy. And I said, can we go through this together? And the guy I was out with said, sure. Like he wasn't, you know, like, but it, because it was, we were trying something out, it took some of the pressure off. And how did it go? It was great. What did you get out of it? Or the both well, of part of it was just both of us felt reassured that we, we had both been tested and we, had, there wasn't, you know, that we didn't have to, we knew where the stat, what the status was, mm -hmm. but also part of it is that you share something you like. And that opened up a really fun dialogue, and it modeled us talking about how we both felt in, in and out of bed. So for those of you who want to jump and see the formula, um, it's on my website, readaboutsex.com, and you can just type in safer sex elevator speech um, or elevator speech in the search bar, and it'll bring you right to the post. I'll put the link below, too. Great. But the, the, the basic formula is you share when you were last tested and what was your status, you share whatever your relationship, you know, current relationship status is, uh, any relationship agreements you have, um, or if you're, if you're, if it's important to you to share, like, well, I'm straight or I'm queer or I'm gay, you know, you can drop in like other orientation identifiers there. Um, then you're going to go through what your safer sex protocols are. What are your needs? Briefly, what are your needs for when you're going to have sex if you were to have sex? Yeah. Um, what's on the table, what's not, and what do you have to be doing for that to feel safe emotionally or physically? Condoms, no condoms, whatever those things are. Yeah, and it's not saying if you have this conversation doesn't mean you're going to have sex. It just means that you've cleared the deck so that if you decide to, it's really easy. Yeah, and then after, after you share what your safer sex protocols are, what I recommend is you share any kind of sexual information that needs to be updated, like since you were last tested, Maybe you had a condom failure, or you know, maybe you got a vasectomy, and now I don't have sperm. Um, well, technically you do, but that's a long story. Another video. Um, <laughs> and then once you share, uh, you know, any current sexual needs or things that you need to share, then you share something that you like sexually and something that you don't like sexually. And by sexual, I mean it can be cuddling and making out. It doesn't have to be like boning. Um, so you get to share something that you like and what you don't like. And then the very end of it, and this is why it's so useful, is you ask the other person, how about you? Mm -hmm. And what you end up doing is you're role modeling a way to have a conversation that they probably might not have a way of, of you know, having it with you. So you initiate it, you role model a way to have it. And then in me asking, how about you? What that person says back in the next two to three, four minutes tells me volumes about where they are in their life, you know, how good are they at using their words, do they know the kind of sex that they like, what their status is. So your safer sex elevator speech not only makes it easier for you to initiate a conversation that you should be having, it's a great assessment tool yeah. for the people that you're considering jumping into bed with. Yes. And it, I love that it sets, a lot of people don't talk to each other. People have been married for 30 years and never learned to talk to each other about what they like and don't like. So you're starting off right at the outset saying, mm -hmm. let's talk about this stuff. Yeah. And so you're role modeling that it's okay to talk about yeah. sex, which also helps because that person might actually speak up in bed. Yes. A little to the left, a little to the right. <laughs> Things that could be 
very helpful. <laughs> so would you, do you want to role model uh, a safer sex elevator speech? I think we do should. We well, let's do a d another video for okay. that. Okay. Tune in to video two. <laughs>